Hello, welcome back to Cardinal Science. In this video, we'll be continuing through our IGCSE Edexcel chemistry. In this video, we'll be looking at point 1.26, calculate relative formula masses, including relative molecular masses, MR, from relative atomic masses. Okay, now we're gonna look at 1.26, calculating relative formula masses, MR, from relative atomic masses, AR. Now, if you remember from earlier videos, when we look at the periodic table, you see all the elements in little squares, and they have two numbers, the top number being the mass number, and the bottom number being the atomic number. We're going to be focusing on the mass number, or the AR in this case. I've just given you two examples here. You've got your oxygen over here with a mass number of 16, and your hydrogen on the left with a mass number of 1. Now, when hydrogen bonds to oxygen, it forms water, H2O. Now, what we're going to be trying to figure out for the relative formula mass is the total mass of in a molecule based on the relative masses of each atom within it. Now an H2O molecule, as you can see here, is made up of two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. Now each hydrogen has a mass of one and each oxygen has a mass of 16. So in this case, we've got two times one plus 16. Two times one is obviously two, add that to 16, gives us 18. So the relative formula mass of H2O is 18. Now, before we go into more examples, I'm going to run you through a few rules to make sure you don't get confused when you do this. The first thing, the big numbers like you'd have just seen when we did the balancing equations are irrelevant to relative formula masses. Secondly, the small numbers, for example, in H2O, we had the small number two, applies only to the element just behind them. Okay, so H2 there means you have two hydrogens. It doesn't affect the oxygen and it wouldn't affect anything else that was to the left of H. So any other element, it only affects the one that is just before it. In addition to that, and as you saw earlier with the calcium hydroxide, everything inside a bracket is multiplied by the number outside of it. So for example, when we had calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, that's made up of one Ca atom, two oxygens, and two hydrogens, because everything inside that bracket was multiplied by two. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of people make mistakes with is the capitalization of element names and symbols. So most elements on the periodic table are only one letter, and when they are, they're a capital, so like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. When they have two letters, the second letter is always, always lowercase. I've seen people make mistakes here in assuming, for example, uh, that CO, both capital, is actually cobalt as opposed to carbon monoxide. Cobalt would be a big C with a small O. Just something to keep an eye on. Okay, now here are some examples for you to have a go at. Pause the video, have a go, and you can work through with my working afterwards. You'll need your periodic table for, to get all the mass numbers for each element. Now let's get going. So for the first one, CO2, we've got one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Okay, now what's the mass of carbon? Carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. So we have one times 12 plus 2 multiplied by 16. That's of course 12 plus 32, which is 44. For the next one, NH4Cl. So we have N and we have one of those. We have H and we have 4 and we have Cl, which we have one of. Now the mass of N is 14. The mass of hydrogen is of course 1 and the mass of chlorine is 35.5. Now, when you add this up, you end up with 53.5. For this next one, we have PB, which is, of course, lead. We have nitrogen and we have oxygen. Now, we have one lead. We have two nitrogens because there's one nitrogen inside the bracket, but it's multiplied by two from outside the bracket. We have three oxygens inside the bracket. So we multiply that by two to give us six. Now we just need to multiply each one of those 
by the individual masses and add them up. So PV is 207, nitrogen is 14, and oxygen is 16. When you multiply those up and add them together, you should get 331. Now the last one, ammonium sulfate, we have nitrogen, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. How many nitrogens do we have? Well, the nitrogens inside the bracket, there's only one of them, but there's a two outside the bracket, so we have the two. Hydrogens, we have four inside and two outside. Multiply those together, gives us eight. We have one sulfur and four oxygens. I'll multiply each one by its mass. And then we can add those all up together to give us the relative formula mass of 132. Now, just like with balancing equations, calculating relative formula mass or relative molecular mass calculations is a key skill that underpins quite a lot of other chemistry. Now, from time to time, you will get individual questions that ask you to just calculate the relative formula mass or the relative molecular mass. However, often they'll be part of moles calculations and I'll link future videos on moles for you in the description so that you can find them. But as I say, often they come up as parts of larger questions. It's a really key skill and one to get good practice at. As always, thank you for watching. This has been Cardinal Science. Please give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and stick around for more chemistry material as we move forward.